Hi. Good evening. It's me again. Again, it's the same night. I um, decided to do the last video on remote neural monitoring. And this time, um, this time we're going to talk about um, how it's used locally in the community. And um, you can basically get put on remote is the slang. And then um, by being put on remote, you can then become assaulted um, in person by perps, okay, that have your information because of you getting put on remote. So let me help you um, understand this topic. This video won't take long. It's going to be a little different um, than my other ones because um, this one is more of a free-flowing, um, not, uh, some of the information is from the book, uh, guinea pigs by Dr. John Hall that I've read and some of it, it it's more of a hodgepodge of other you know where I've gotten other um, sources on remote neural monitoring and how it's used in local communities and what being put on remote means so anyways thank you guys for joining me um, hope you're having a good day or a good night whenever you get in this so the usual welcome welcome thank you thanks for being here I know you know what I have for you, what I always have. I always have something for you guys, right? Something good, something worthwhile. Extra, extra, get your free info. It's free and you will benefit. So I know your, t excuse me, I know your time is valuable, I do. And um, so is the information in this video. So stick with me, we'll get through this, okay? Um, this is going to be very beneficial, um, especially as we're cruising right into 2019. There are some things going on as far as assaults and the way that they're being done with technology. Oh, yes, we are at that point. Um, you know, it's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a wonderful time for advanced technology. And unfortunately, the criminal, criminally minded people um, can use this very powerful tool of remote neural monitoring as a weapon. It's, you know, it's actually a psychotronic weapon for warfare is what it is. Um, but it can be used for positive things, too. I digress. Let's get into it. So welcome. We're going to spend the next hour, maybe less, discussing remote neural monitoring and being put on remote. Okay. So, why would somebody put you on remote? Well, the main culprit, as usual, um, one of the main reasons is for training, research, and development. That's right. In this world of being non-consensual guinea pigs, sometimes we are tested on. We are tested on for training, research, and development for new weapons, and that includes technology and the new psychotronic weapons. Um, psychotronic, excuse me. Psychotronic meaning they affect the... Um, the psyche, the brain, right? So, again, the brain, the wonderful, wonderful brain. We love it, right? It's This is what makes us us. Hopes, dreams, joy, peace, love, all that housed in this wonderful organ here, okay? That's the brain. Now, just because that here, you guys got it? Just because that is the regular organ of the brain, don't forget that the brain also works on the electromagnetic level as well. That's more accurately um, portrayed in this picture, artist interpretation. That's a human brain, and that shows some of the electromagnetic activity. Electromagnetic frequency is um, every time you think a thought, every time you think a thought or feel an emotion, your brain gives, uh, you know, it produces an electromagnetic activity inside. So again, that's what this picture is displaying. Okay, so it's important to think of the brains in its two forms, both organic and electromagnetic, because both are correct, just in different forms. Um, so remote neural monitoring, this also is a uh, um, this is a neuron inside of the brain, so if you were to take um, the brain, a swab, you would swab it and put it on a slide and look at it on a microscope. This is what you would see. The neurons is the cellular um, activity in the brain, like a network, kind of looks like tree branches, um, and there's trillions of them in there. They're responsible for every thought that we think, every emotion we feel. That's why a lot of um, psychotropic medications and emotions that, or I'm sorry, medications that affect 
your emotions like um <laughs> like uh depression pills um anxiety pills things like that they work on this um on your neurons okay so that's where um this term comes from rm excuse me rn like nancy m like mother rnm stands for remote neural monitoring so that's remotely from a distance um, monitoring your neural activity in the brain your thoughts and emotions how interesting it, it really would be I'd like to see my own I you know somebody could explain to me how to read them I would I mean I think that'd be eye-opening for people right to see you know in different stages of the day like what we were thinking or what we were doing and you know maybe how to improve or I don't know I guess that's more of a natural organic experience nonetheless it would be interesting so we're going to talk about remote neural monitoring yet again but this time on a different level this one's a little bit more personal um this one's going to hit home because i'm going to tell you how this leads to us this can and, and does oftentimes many times leads to assault in-person assaults by being put on remote okay how is that okay another version another aspect now we're talking about the brain and we're talking about neural activity um, EMS right electromagnetic frequencies um, there is a thing and you guys have probably heard of this I'll show you VR stands for virtual reality correct okay you guys have seen that that's where they um, you know put on the headsets and the in the glasses and you know you can pretend you're driving a car or I seen one where like you can um, shoot zombies look kind of fun <laughs> there was one like for um fishing i think and there was another one for race car yeah race car driving um so basically and i seen one at the mall the other day actually i was at our local mall and they have a new display there's like three chairs they look like those little egg-shaped futuristic chairs and you get in them and it can um i guess it was simulating a roller coaster ride and how it does that she said you know you had to put on the little he helmet headset thing and then the glasses and then what that does which we've covered so we know this it you know gives sensory input to your brain um to mimic the sensation that you're on a roller coaster i particularly don't enjoy roller coasters anymore uh something happened as i got older or maybe something else with you know all this unauthorized testing and whatnot for some reason i get dizzy and i cannot do roller coasters anymore i you know some of them yeah plus i i value my life i'm you don't want to hear it because i don't want to ruin it for you if you like ro roller coasters i used to love them at one time enjoy your roller coasters okay anywho um remember we spoke about how each person has a unique um brain frequency reading you know electromagnetic frequency each person has a unique um signature okay uh it's called a brain signature it's unique like our fingerprints so everybody's are different same thing with our brains of course if our fingers are different why wouldn't our brains be okay there's a specific um brain signature to access somebody's channel as it were okay this is this thing brain signature that's the name for it okay and you want to be real um that's a word to keep in your in your vocabulary brain signature because i have a feeling in the future they're going to become more and more popular i bet we'll maybe i don't want to speculate but maybe one day we'll be able to buy and sell our brain signatures and i think we already are that's how this you know program starts a little bit how you get on remote okay so remember the brain is an organ but it also function on it functions on an electromagnetic level meaning there's electricity in the brain and there's magnetism in the brain same thing with the heart right when you go get an ekg that's electrical cardio for the heart gram ekg electrical cardiogram and the brain is going to be an eeg electrical encephalogram electrical because the brain operates at on a electromagnetic level okay so this picture i believe kind of accurately accurately describes it there you go the brain and those wavy lines indicate um, frequencies or signals and as you can see the brain can receive signals and it also makes signals when it thinks of a thought or emotion you know or it tells a body part to move so it's all there that's where all the action happens electromagnetic 
frequency. The brain acting on electromagnetic level. All right. So my favorite word again, and your guys, you know, you can have it as your favorite word too, but it's an important word. So EMF, electromagnetic frequency. That is what the brain operates off of. Now, to measure an electromagnetic frequency at EMF, you're going to use an EEG. That's electroencephalogram. For the heart, it would be EKG, right? But we're now we're talking about the brain. So electroencephalogram, measuring brain activity. Yeah. Who knew it could be measured? It can. Now, this is what the machine looks like when it measures it. Okay, this is when the person has to be in person. This is if you get one done at the local hospital for whatever reasons. Be careful getting them because once you get these, that's where your brain signature comes in. You know, I mean, get one if you need it, but, you know, just saying. Okay, so this is an electroencephalogram, and they would um, hook these electrodes up to different parts in your scalp that coincide with uh, different parts of your brain. We talked about that on the other video because different parts of your brain control different functions. Okay, so the EEG. Okay, you guys have seen that once, so you don't need to see it again. That's what measure the EM that's what measures the EMFs. Okay, you follow me still? All right, good. Um, why is EMFs and EEGs important? Well, the EEG is measuring the EMFs. Well, what is the EMF? EMF is every thought and emotion ever thought by anybody or ever will be thought is always going to read out as an EMF, electromagnetic frequency. That's the way we're built. Just like every time you breathe in, you're going to take an oxygen. That's just the way we're built, right? So this is interesting to know, EMFs. So that's what the EEG is reading. Not that it's an EMF, that's the name for it, but it represents thoughts and emotions of the human psyche. So interesting, isn't it? It is. It is. So fascinating, aren't we? We're made wondrously in God's image, the true God. Okay, so um, these thoughts and emotions, remember, Every thought that we have, I feel like I have information to share would be a thought. I'm going to make a video would be the behavior. So then you would see the video. That's the behavior. But before the behavior came the thought. Now, same thing with emotions. I feel happy, so I'm going to sing, right? Um, first, uh, you got to feel the emotion. Then you display the behavior. So remember, thoughts and emotions are EMFs. Why are they important? Because they then produce the observable behavior, right? We're all humans walking around doing different behaviors, right? Some are reading, some are writing, some are, you know, working, some are lifting, some are cleaning, some are cooking. At all times of the day, we're always doing behaviors. You know, we're laying down. <laughs> I've been doing that one more than I've actually wanted to just because my energy has been a little bit drained lately. Um, we're not going to get into that. Nobody wants to hear that, right? No, I don't even want to talk about it. Just saying. <laughs> Sometimes that's a behavior. Why? Because the feeling of tiredness first. Okay, that's a mystery. Anyway, later. Okay, so um, just to give you the emotion little chart again, there's the primary emotions. You know, of anger, fear, joy, and sadness. And then underneath, you guys probably can't see this, but there's all the sub-emotions that stem off of those primary emotions. So, you know, it's just showing um, how diverse we are and how many thoughts we can think of. Wonderful. So, what is the conclusion of all this? As the doctors um, who did the research at Stanford in the 70s, what did they come to the conclusion? We went over this. That yes, we can read your mind. Okay? They can. Cat's out of the bag. The gig is up. They can read it. I guess they weren't hiding that they could, you know. Just have to want to find out about it. It's a possibility now. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a capability. I shouldn't say possibility. You know, it's being done and it's done okay um i wanted to show you another picture of how much our um how much our environment is saturated with emfs because remember our brains operate on them and so do our bodies and also our environment to a large extent runs on emfs all around us inside the house 
And as soon as we step outside the door, don't worry though, we're pretty durable, aren't we? So, that's caught you up for the last video, right? Because we talked about remote neuromonitoring monitoring and how it's advanced in 2018 to be able to both monitor and monitor thoughts and emotions and send those thoughts and emotions back in to the brain and also access remote neural monitoring can access the visual and the audio and the motor cortexes in the brain which um, gives the programmer who has access to the remote neural monitoring of targeted person, you or whomever, it gives them access so that they can look out of your eyes, right? Visual cortex. They're, they're seeing what you're seeing. They're hearing what you're hearing. It can move your body, send a signal to your muscles, make your hand, uh, you know, flex, make your hand extend. It's all muscles. It's all stensors, flexors. It's all signals. Signals. All right. Oh, and the cool part is this all can be done. You know, I mean, all this wonderful stuff, it can be done in real time, you know, so no waiting. Real time, fast, quick, Jimmy John's, you know, freaky fast, <laughs> right? That's how we're made. It's good. Um, so uh, we talked earlier about who has access to remote neural monitoring, since it does, it is technology, an advanced form of it. Um, there's all different levels in the power hierarchy, that pyramid that I showed you. Okay, so um, basically remote neural monitoring, and again, I'll just repeat it, it can lead to in-person assaults um, by people being put on remote, and then um, perps coming, and um, raping the person as they're in a induced catatonic is the slang state okay that's what ends up happening so how do you let's talk about a little more so you cannot get on it i don't want to see this happen to anybody else okay all right so we're gonna talk about the power hierarchy all right here we go, the pyramid. There we go, that's the pyramid of the power hierarchy. It exists, okay? Um, we're gonna be talking about, um, not necessarily the higher level perps, um, as far as the power hierarchy, hierarchy goes, we're gonna be talking about more of the lower level perps that actually carry out the assaults. Um, sometimes, I refer to them as the goon squad. I heard somebody else say it, and it just kind of summed it up, you know? Because it kind of reminds you, like, you know, the goon squad. They come in and, like, you know, and just carry out any type of dirty work, you know, depravity. You know, they're not always horrible people, but the goon squad does horrible things. Stay off this remote. Stay off of the on remote. Stay off of the on remote. Let me show you how. Let's talk about it. All right, so... Um, Remote neural monitoring, we said it's an advanced form of virtual reality as well. Um, so all different types of people can have access to this um, on putting people on remote. Okay, so think of gamers, think of, you know, music, rookie music producers, you know, with access to all the, the, the sound equipment and everything. You know, you've seen those, the sound studio kind of people. You know, that's technology. That's advanced technology. And a lot of times with music, of course, it operates off of frequencies. So, hmm, funny that. So are our brains. Just saying. Eyes and ears open. Um, so anyone with access to this technology can use this remote neural monitoring, you know, as a psychotronic weapon, which is actually what it is. Okay? Um, you do that by putting somebody into an induced catatonic state, then the goon squad comes in and rapes the targeted person. Target, okay? Um, and again, remote, both remote neural monitoring and virtual reality work off of syncing. Syncing, remember the Bluetooth syncing. So they sync the brain's EMF signals to a computer signal. Um, 
you know, Bluetoothing. That's what it's doing. So the human brain operates off of signals and EMFs. They're both the same interchangeable verbiage. And each person has a unique brain signature. We spoke about that. And that brain signature can be um, can receive EMF broadcast, right? So your brain can make signals and it can also receive signals. So how does the person get access? They force an EMF broadcast into your brain by having access to your brain signature. You know, you get it? It's like there, it's like there's a window open and you know, and they just are pushing on in your biological window. Not like your biological clock. Your biological window. <laughs> okay? So um how is it done? Well, picture this. Picture gamers um, in a group type setting with um, headsets and goggles, you know, the whole equipment, straps sometimes. In cases of sexual virtual reality and uh, remote neural monitoring, there is, I've heard tell, never seen it, but I've heard there is a chair and leg clamps with extra bands to place strategically over the body for maximum, to maximize the effect. Okay, people use virtual reality on remote technology to basically do synthetic telepathy, right? Um, or create a hive mind uh, with multiple users all logged in. See, that's what this is. You're, everybody's brains run on signals. All devices, computers, radio, tablets, TV, those also run off of signals. So when you're talking about telepathy, it used to seem like a big thing, like, what is it? Well, you're basically, it's an exchange of signals, just like a cell phone, you know? You have one cell phone with no cords, you have another cell phone with no cords, and they send a signal to each other to be able to open up a channel, station, to speak on. Same thing with the brains. They're work off of signals. So that's what these people are doing. When you're doing virtual reality, and specifically when you're doing remote neural monitoring, you are um, using a hive mind type of uh, synthetic telepathy type of um, activity. That's what that is. Um, so yeah, uh, all because the brain and the human brain and computers run off of EMFs, signals. So now, I maybe this is all fun and games if it's consensual. Maybe so. Um, you know, if they're agreeing to this technology, I could see how this could be helpful in the case of like, you know, a husband and wife and one of them has a stroke or something and can't engage in sexual activity anymore. Maybe because the field I work in, I have I have seen that, you know, and that's a sad thing. Um, so in this in that type of situation, this would be a wonderful tool for for them to use to enhance their um, or regain even their sexual um, abilities for, you know, spouses and whatnot. That's, you know, consensual. This could be, you know, this could be a great idea. Um, that's not what we're talking about, though, in this video. Okay, we can cover that in another video. I, we should do a whole video on BCI, the helpful parts of it, you know? We'll, we'll do that, you know? Keep it positive, especially we're going into 2019. Let's, um, let's be aware, but let's be positive, too. There's, this is great technology. It's also powerful technology. So, um, the dark side to this powerful technology is that um, when it happens to people who are unaware that they're actually being put on remote, that's a bad thing to not know. That's your brain activity. You got people playing in your brain and you don't know it. That's And it's invisible, so and they're not going to tell you. So, you figure out the hard way. But let me help you. Okay? Um, so, yeah, if you're non-consenting, that's a bad thing. Um, and they're going to go ahead and, like I said, they basically force an electromagnetic frequency into your biological window and, um, you know, force a broadcast on you. This can happen when a victim is sleeping, especially. Your brain waves are very vulnerable. So if somebody has you on an EMF broadcast on remote and they're broadcasting into your sleeping brain, your brain can go into a catatonic state. Now, um, catatonic state is the slang that I've heard. And what that means is that you are in a catatonic state and cannot get up from it. Now, I've heard tell that this technology is supposed to be used for surgeries. 
Again, that would be a great use for it. You know, if you're in surgery, you don't want to wake up from it at all. You know, especially if it's like open heart or brain surgery, you know, something that really could be painful. You know, you want to be catatonic at that point. Not when you're laying down for an afternoon nap or you're going to sleep for the evening and you need to be awake to be able to function, wake up for a fire, etc., etc. Protect yourself from the goon squad. But they have figured out how to criminalize this technology. That's what I'm telling you. They can put you in a catatonic state and break in and assault you. Just because they had you on remote. So, uh, yeah, the perpetrating group usually has connections or ties, even if they're lower level, excuse me, even if they're lower level on this pyramid, you know, local gang, um, local neighborhood people, you know, the people you grow up with, your friends or family, you know, people, you know, if you grow up on a lower level, you know, most of your friends and family are on a lower level, but don't let that fool you. Sometimes they can know people on, you know, go up the ladder here. Uh-oh, one of your friends knows uh, somebody in the police department. Uh-oh, one of your friends knows somebody in the sheriff's department. Oh, your friend was in the army, maybe. Oh, now they got army ties, you know, military stuff. Now we're getting higher. Okay, oh, your friend knows a judge. Uh-oh, your friend knows a lawyer. You see? It, it goes on and on and on. Oh, your friend knows, you know, people who were, you know, educators and have ties to... Okay, well, see, now... Everybody knows somebody, right? What's that song? Trick Daddy? Everybody knows somebody who knows something about it? I think that's how it goes. You guys get it. Just because you wouldn't think somebody has access to this technology because they're on the lower levels, they could even be given access to this technology by somebody in the higher levels to kind of, you know, uh, spread the technology. Yeah. So, um, what this people would do because this is a more advanced technology, I mean, putting somebody in a catatonic state, that's pretty serious. You know, what if it goes wrong and they don't wake up? Oh, the goon squad doesn't care. Whoops. You know, they died in their sleep. You know, sometimes you hear weird stories like that. Like, what? They were such and such age and they died in their sleep. That's so odd. Okay, well, stuff like this is going on with technology. Um, so all they have to do is get a hold of that brain signature, So, which is unique to every human being, just like our fingerprints are unique. So, um... All that they would have to do is get a hold of that, even though I believe they're expensive and hard to come by. But that doesn't mean that somebody in the crime syndicate, you know, um, that does trafficking for, you know, as a pastime, wouldn't have access to it or couldn't get their hands on it. So um, that's it's my belief that you need some type of ties to get a hold of this uh, this type of technology. So... As you understand, we need legislation on this like yesterday so that this we can avoid any more uh, assault from this technology being used. And it's again, it's uh, it's very dangerous because it is invisible. OK, it's a perfect uh, tool for, uh, you know, a person who wants to rape someone, for instance. Uh, so at any time, remember now, any time any of you can get put on remote by anyone you cross paths with that might have ties. Um, I'll just give you an example. It could be ex-spouses or ex-dating partners, people who liked you romantically and you didn't feel the same. They might feel rejected. Uh, not your fault, but, you know, people handle rejection differently. Um, maybe friends who are not your friends anymore. Maybe family who's mad at you. Maybe co-workers. You know, there's always something going on at work. Who knows? Church members. You would think that's the last place it would be, but it can... You know, the dark hand can stretch even into the church. We know this. Even the Bible speaks of Satan entering into a meeting that was being held in heaven. You know, causing problems. So, you know, how much more so here on earth that, you know, we would meet people like that as well. Even in the house of God, the true God. Um, you may have maybe creepy neighbors, right? Especially, I know this is a day and age where people like to be single and live alone, maybe before they get married, you know, without roommates. Who wants a roommate if you can live by yourself, right? That's what I always thought for years. Well, be careful because, you know, single women, especially, you know, you get a creepy neighbor, they see you, they don't see you with a boyfriend or husband. They think, oh, you know, they start liking you. You don't feel the same. 
then it could become a creepy, you know, stalker situation. Just saying, men too, you know. This is this is real life. This is what can happen. All right. Um, also, too, medical personnel. Remember, the root the root um, suppliers of this is for training, um, research, and development. Right. So maybe even medical personnel or universities or private corporations doing non-consensual research have, you know, have access to this. Maybe it slipped out of their hands into a somebody else's hands. OK. Um, and then people just do it for all reasons. Revenge, jealousy, power and control, wanting to humiliate and dominate, uh, humiliate and dominate someone. Right. Maybe. Um, Maybe that coworker, church member, school staff member just doesn't like you and they're a little bit of a sociopath, right? Usually you got to hide that. You know, it's it's hard for sociopaths. They can't really, you know, <laughs> hurt us like they want to. But oh boy, now with this uh with these uh technologies, oh, everything's invisible. <gasps> a sociopath heaven. That's why I'm warning you guys. So um yeah, I mean, imagine what a perfect tool for a sociopath. They could be mad at you, but instead of directly, you know, causing problems for you so it could be traced back to them, they could, um, you know, do the old by proxy, you know, give the technology to somebody else and have, you know, the goon squad doing it, right? There's always a goon squad. Have them raping you and harassing you, right? All types of dangerous people at your door. Meanwhile, the real enemy, the real one who started it, is behind the scenes laughing and loving your pain and suffering. This happens, all right? Especially with this invisible weapon, okay? It's a weapon, but it's invisible. That's why we need legislation. So, uh, yeah, um... Maybe you blew a whistle. We're talking about the reasons why. Maybe you're a whistleblower. Maybe you've seen something at, you know, your place of employment. It just didn't seem right. It seemed real off, you know. So, uh oh, you wanted to report it, you know, just to set the matter straight and to get everything worked out. And, you know, you didn't want to get anybody in trouble. You said it real nicely. Oh, you blew a whistle. Depending on what whistle, that can come back to bite you. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. Just saying. Um... In this day and age, with secret psychotronic, invisible psychotronic weapons at the disposal of being put on remote to be harassed and possibly sexually assaulted, be careful, okay? I'm not mad at you. Go ahead and, you know, blow it. <laughs> blow the whistle if you have to, but be prepared, okay? That's why we need legislation. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that is. Um, okay, also, too, it could just be a local crime syndicate. Um, they got new toys. Right. I mean, that. you know, I think at the end of the day, even some people are tough and, you know, and people do some things. Right. But at the end of the day, we all are kind of childlike, don't you think, and are wanting to, you know, have adventures and explore the world. So maybe a crime syndicate gets access to a new, you know, they got these new fancy technological gadgets, you know, that you can log into somebody's brain activity. They want to use them. Sure they do. They're like kids on Christmas, you know, whatever, uh, Christmas Eve or Christmas, you know, when they open their presents. Yay, we can use them on people. But these are psychotronic weapons, remember, because it's remote neural monitoring. It gives you access to a lot of things, thoughts, emotions, movement of body, you know, visual cortex, audio cortex. These are things that only usually the owner of the vessel should have, right? Because once... You don't have that. Once somebody else has control over that, you see, now we're reaching a point where it's becoming a slavery. You know, you call that mind control slave is would be the complete term because, you know, somebody's controlling your mind. Right. Nobody wants that. That's why we're going to get legislation started. Right. This is a new movement and it's an important one. So I'm glad you guys are with me. Almost done. We're at uh, 35 minutes here. All right. So the point is, criminally minded people have access to things that they should not. All right. We can all protect ourselves when we are awake and functioning. True. OK. Being on remote gives them access to your brain, your brain signature and all that goes with it. OK, so. This could be dangerous because remember, the name of the the um, you know the technology is remote neural monitoring. It's right in the word. You know, it's right in the name. Monitoring. Monitoring is surveillance. It's used really for the enemy, right? 
that's what it is. It's a weapon of war, a psychotronic weapon of war, not to, you know, to be used to monitor someone. Private, you know, what should be private, their thoughts and emotions and their body movements and their control of their vessel, that's, uh, you know, that's private. And when you go against that, you're, you know, that's what you would do to an enemy. Right. So it's a weapon. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then they know your whereabouts at all times when they have you on this thing, too. And that's how it can lead to the in-person stalking. Because they know where you're at at all times. Not only do they know what you're at, where you're at, they know what you think, you know. They know everything that they should not know, obviously. They should not have access to this. Okay. Um, so, yeah. This is stalking 2018 version. No more hiding in the bushes. No more. Now it's all remote neural monitoring um also don't let people fool you even the biggest baddest muscle bound mma agile you know martial arts and weapons expert and army ex-army you know um which you know i love those people you know and they're they're trained but here's the thing this is why this is so dangerous and we need to get legislation asap is because everybody has a brain everybody and it is vulnerable and can be hacked into and anybody can be put on remote. Okay? Somebody can get access to your brain signature and put you on remote and turn you into a mind control slave. Not good. So, be aware and don't be scared. Do not be scared. Um, but I just want to remind you that the first quarter of 2019 is coming up. And that means, you know, means more guinea pigs are going to be needed, right? I mean, this is mind control training, research, and development for mind control of the masses, all right? It's being tested on a, only a portion of the population, probably a bigger amount than we actually know. I believe some people um, are don't know how to speak on this or maybe are afraid or maybe have spoken and have gotten shushed and just don't know what's going on. Bless their heart, you know? This, we know now, we know. We know what's going on. We have a big, clear window view now. We got it, okay? You got the gist. You don't need to know all the details, but the fact that there exists a technology that can monitor your thoughts and emotions, send those thoughts and emotions back in, and then also control, have access to your visual cortex and your audio cortex to see what you see and hear what you hear. And then also have the ability to move your body remotely. That gives you a big clue of what's possible, right? So 2019 is coming up. Um, yeah, my let's um let's get with it. I'm thinking. First, research it. Do your research. I suggest you do research on remote neural monitoring and electromagnetic frequencies. That's a great place to start. All right. And I promise you I wouldn't take a lot of your time and I'm not. I'm all done. Um, yeah. So stay smart. And remember this. The pyramid, the hierarchy of power. Remember that. And remember that it's all done remotely. So that means a lot of it is invisible. Okay, that's the thing as a society we're going to have to uh, get past. A lot of things are invisible. I mean, for those of us who are Christian and believe in the true God, God is invisible to our eyes, correct? The true God and all the angel spirits, you know, but they exist. We know they exist for those of us who are believers. Okay, and even for those who are not believers, well, you know, just because you cannot see an atom, you know, looking at your body, you know that, you know, on a lower subatomic level that there are atoms. That's a, that is what we're made of, you know. So, um, so that's where we're at. Again, I just want you to remember this word. This is uh, BCI. That's what uh, technology. You are basically, that stands for brain, computer, um, interface. So you're interfacing the human brain with computers and or devices. Okay. Which is what they're doing. They're hacking into your brain in this, in this example and, um, forcing a broadcast in there, right? And each part of your brain controls something different, right? 
So audio, visual, motor, what we were talking about, that's all controlled here in vision right in the back. Okay, so if they get uh, access to this, then they have access to those functions. You don't want anybody having access to those functions except for the owner of the vessel, correct? But the brain is a giant antenna, so it can uh, receive signals and it makes its own signals. So we're vulnerable to signals, you understand? And our whole world is immersed in them. Wi-Fi, radio, TV, right? Smart meters. Usually every home has one now. That, uh, yeah, okay. So, EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies. I feel like this is what the brain lit up in talking about brain-computer interface. You know, the brain lit up. How wondrously we're made, huh? All right, in the human body, it's got lots of parts. So remember, if remote neural monitoring gives control over the motor cortex, it can control some of these body parts. Somebody else having control over your body parts. What could be wrong with that? Hmm, where do I start? <laughs> Privacy, uh, human rights, stuff like that. Yeah. So um, but we'll leave off on a positive note. You know, this is a lot of information. And um, and I think we covered a lot, okay? And it, But it's important. Please remember, remote neural monitoring and EMFs, if nothing else, okay? So, uh, stay smart, do that research, You'll, it'll so be worth it, you'll feel so much better. This stuff is very interesting too, you're going to learn a lot, you know, you'll learn a lot. Um, and remember that this is all done in real time, right? So if you're, say for instance, you're on remote neural monitoring and you think a thought, mm, I want ice cream, poof, now they have access to that thought. She wants ice cream. Well, who cares whether I want ice Why do they want to know? I don't know. Training, research, and development. And the goon squads just want to rape you. That's their benefit for uh, being Satan's little helpers. Santa's. Satan? Santa helpers. Satan's helpers. That's what I wanted to say. Satan's helpers. Okay. Um, let's leave off on a positive note, shall we? It's late. I'm tired. But let's, let's leave off on a positive note. Um, I'm going to quote to you the scripture 2 Corinthians 2.11. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, so you see the key word here? Um, we're not going to let Satan get an advantage um, because we are not ignorant of his devices. You know, his tactics, his schemes, his the way he tries to do things covertly. That's one of his big tricks, right? With Satan, he's a big deceiver. Satan, the name means slanderer. And I think devil actually means deceiver, right? Um, so yeah, we're not, we cannot be ignorant of that, right? We are not. So we're getting strong. When, uh, when we get knowledge and when we depend on the true God, we are strong. That's what we can do. All right. So I told you guys I wouldn't keep you. I thank you so much for staying for this last video tonight. You have a good evening or a good day whenever you're watching this. And um, stay smart. Do your research. God loves us. Oh, hit like and comment and subscribe if you like. I'd appreciate it. Don't feel pressured, though. You don't have to. But if you feel like you got some valuable information from this video, then by all means, hit like and subscribe and comment if you want. Sometimes there's no need to comment. But if you feel like there is if something you want me to explain something more, or if you have suggestions for me on, on videos or something that you want me to see or books I, I could read, something that, you know, some information that you want to share, I'd be happy to hear it. All right. So thank you so much for your time. I know you guys are busy. I know. We're all busy. So thank you. All right. Have a good night. Talk to you later.